Welcome back to year number 12, week number 12 for the Cascade Valley Coyotes. Now, this week is probably the biggest matchup in a long time for Cascade Valley. We are playing the number one team in the regular season, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. But it shouldn't. Corn Huskers, but it should have been us. Now, Lee Corso was going with Nebraska in this one, and I get it. They're the number one team in the nation, but I do not believe they're as good as us. We obviously lost to a very tough USC team, but we are the best team pound for pound in the nation, and we're here to prove it. And if you kind of take a look and examine Nebraska's schedule, you're not really seeing many ranked opponents. They did, however, beat USC by seven points, which is huge, and we will be the only their second other ranked team. I'm just saying, we got a chance today. Now, this week is also big because, again, a home game, which kind of bodes well for us. We obviously had a 30-plus game win streak at home, and then we lost to USC, which reset that. But we have Montario Moses, Leandro Gaines, Taekwon Freeman, Cortez Terry, and Landon Hatata all visiting this week, which means we can have a lot of people signing. Hatata's currently sitting number one for us right now. Cortez Terry, we're number two. If you take a, kind of a closer look at that one. There was a week uh, 11 visit by LSU, which means we should jump them here. But we have to be careful that Auburn doesn't jump us as well. If we win this game, it's the number one team in the nation. We should be able to lock a lot of these guys up. Marshall LaChapelle, we are still number one, but Washington does have a visit this week lined up. We are beating them pretty handily, but again, they're only a thousand points back. We've seen some teams jump 1,400 points. We could be in danger of losing the number one recruit in the nation. Jarvis King falls back because again, LSU's visit. I don't know how things are going to shake out with them. I'm hoping we can land him, but it might be a little tough here. Javon Ford, same thing. A week 11 visit put us behind 800 points. Leandro Gaines, we should be in a good spot. Alabama had a visit. It was a great one. They got 1,280 points, but we are in the driver's seat with a visit in week 12, and we still have the lead. Taekwon Freeman, we fell back big because of Kentucky having a visit. We're down 1,200 points. We're, going, we're down 1,300 points. Let's see what ultimately happens here. Tim Jones is the guy we're kind of moving up the board on. We should be able to get into his top two very soon. And then Montario Moses, another guy that we are trying to get inside that sort of top spot. I think we're going to be good, but with OU having a visit in week 14 and Miami having a visit next week in week 13, we have our work cut out for us. And speaking of having the work cut out for him, if Tyrell Brown wants to repeat as a Heisman winner, he's got a lot of work to do. Right now, Devin Rogers is moving up the board. Obviously, a guy that beat us early in the season. He threw for nearly 400 yards, had six total touchdowns, and he beat Stanford. He's looking pretty good right now. Tyrell's not doing bad. He had 121 yards last week, which was a much-needed boost for him. But only a single touchdown kind of hurt him a little bit. Caver is still pretty much the favorite at this point. He will be a dominant force in NCAA, and he will be in the GGBFL at some point. But he's the guy that we've got to watch out for. But the thing we care about the most is where we kind of slot in the college football ranking. Again, if we win today against number one Nebraska, we are without a doubt in the top four. We are currently six overall in the coaches poll, seven though in the college football playoff ranking, but we're tied with USC. They get the tiebreaker game because they beat us and it is what it is. If we lose today, we can kiss the college football playoffs goodbye. But if we win today, I think we're pretty much alive. It's something I do just want to point out again, just to keep a watch out for here is Rodriguez Gibson is having a stellar career. He's only three career interceptions behind Mike Hempel. Mike Hempel had 19, I believe in his three years here. Gibson now in his third year is at 16. He has a chance to break that record. He's going to need a ball out these last couple weeks of the season, but if he gets four more, He's the all-time leader in Cascade Valley history. And that's saying something. Now, before we jump into this game, again, we have some things we got to lock in today. Leandro Gaines, we need three sacks with the D-line, two tackles for loss with the D-line. We need four swatted passes, uh, two interceptions for Cortez Terry. We need two sacks with the linebacker. We've got even more recruits we got to impress. But these are some of the core things we got to do today. Let's lock them up. The number one team in the country is coming to play at Cascade Valley this week. And we are about to show them who the best team in the nation ultimately is. Taylor Reed on the run, a little underneath throw. McBride can't hold on to it. Big second and 10 here. Reed finds one of his favorite receivers, Jeremiah Butler, who gets down for 18 yards. There's been a lot of talk this week, especially about Cascade Valley's uniform choices. When Coach Mervyn McMervyn was asked, why are you wearing the all-black jerseys today? It's been a little bit since you've rocked these. He says, because it's going to be a funeral today, and it's not going to be ours. Tyrell Brown looking for his first carry here. McBride's going to slide in motion. Tyrell Brown's going to try to get some yards here again. Four will take it. Jay Bohm's going to slide in motion here. Tyro Brown goes for a solid gain. He gets about five or so on that one. I feel you want that. I got to do more scouting right now. Big fella, bro. Derek Johnson's going to come in the game. Nowhere to run. Are they stop it for a loss of three, make it a fourth and five. Big third down and 12. Can we stop Nebraska at midfielder? We kind of had our drive stall out a little bit. Kamani Mataga, not a lot of places to go. Rodriguez gives it with his 17th career interception. It's going to haul that one in. And ladies and gentlemen, he is two interceptions away from tying the all-time record at Cascade Valley. Well, a field goal was certainly an option. Coach McMurvin wants the seven points. We stalled out in our last drive trying to go for it on fourth down. It didn't work. Can we get it going here? Taylor Reed not seeing a lot here. Tries to throw one. It might be one of the worst passes we've seen since junior varsity football. It goes nowhere. Nebraska has the ball back. Taylor Reed with a quick adjustment here. 
Has some time. Sees his running back, throws it, and it's picked off by Gidry. He absolutely baited him. Nebraska gets the ball right back, and this has been a tough game for both offenses. We've lined up in man for the majority of today's game, and it's worked really well. We're hoping that same sentiment matches up today. Big pressure off the edge. Kamani Matagi goes down again. This defense is on it. At this point, it's kind of a decent field goal for Nebraska, about 48 yards. Can their kicker come through? Get the first points of the game here at the start of the second quarter. This one is up. It is nearly blocked. It is going to be left of the goalpost. And we are still scoreless here in the second quarter as Michigan is only up seven against Rutgers. Jay Bohm's going to slide over in motion here. Trying to catch the defense off a little bit. That was one of the worst passes Taylor Reed has ever thrown in his entire life. That is supposed to go to RB. Instead, Nebraska has the ball at the one-yard line. I don't know if he was getting hit as he threw this, but that ball... Just went nowhere close. Things getting dicey here. Taylor Reed has definitely struggled a little bit. You've got to get the young fella some help. We got to get some blocking for him, I think, at some point, but he's just got to set his feet and let it rip. Our guys need to stop here. The quarterback's gonna get hit. Donald Gamblin, stand up. Matagi goes down again. Can the defense step up again? Third and goal. They go for a run. And unfortunately, Dante Felix is in the end zone. Great last name, but an even better stiff arm. Defense has been honestly pretty incredible today. It's been offense that has been our Achilles heel. And I mean, there was no one blocked on that play whatsoever. Reed had no time to throw it. Couldn't even finish a three-step drop. So just for the record, we sim the punt like we do 99% of the time. And apparently we fumbled on the punt and there was a fumble recovery in the end zone. Okay. Reed again, not known for his speed, but he looked pretty fast right there in my opinion. We have... Essentially, no one open. Reed tries to throw one. They say it's a fumble, and Nebraska has the ball back for a fourth turnover in the first half. He might have to get benched. This has been an abysmal start so far for Reed. We don't want to give up on our freshman quarterback, but this is just a game that maybe he's not prepared for. Going to the backup may be the only option we have. And Desmond Simmons with his second pick of the game, tying the most in Cascade Valley history for one game. Simmons and Rodriguez Gibson have been those guys. And it's tough, but Taylor Reed has been benched, at least for right now. We'll see how long that lasts, but Mac Thornhill is gonna be in the game. And immediately down the field, a huge pass to return to the Mac. Thornhill back in shotgun is gonna bring Jay Bohm in the backfield with him. Holds on to the read option, pitches this one out. Jay Bohm is going. Jay Bohm is going to the house to cut this lead in half. And just like that, Max Thornhill has given this team a little bit of something. And we've got the lead. Almost. I just got to thank this defense for how good they play today. I am so proud of how they've stepped up. They've had their issues. But look at Jay Bohm. Hold on a second. Jay Bohm with some room here. And Jay Bohm smartly goes out of bounds after a 25 yard return. Looking dynamic there. Thornhill. Ready to get things going. Got some blockers here. Mac Thornhill going up the middle for 15 yards. Nebraska's game plan all week was watching the pocket quarterback. They never thought Mac Thornhill might get in the game. And because of that, this is throwing a huge wrinkle into what they expected today. And look at Tyrell Brown. Love to see a double digit run from him. Full back in the backfield is going to hand off here to Tyrell Brown. Tyrell Brown cuts us up the middle. And look, back to back, 10 plus yard rushes from Tyrell Brown. When was the last time you saw that? First and 10, Thornhill feels the pressure. He's rolling a little bit. He's got Jay Bohm, and Jay Bohm has the first down. Thornhill has not thrown a lot of passes, only for 33 yards on three for four this afternoon, but they've been three important ones. Back here to the run. It's been really good so far. And Tyrell Brown, they say he's at the goal line. There were reports that Coach Merv McMurvey was kicking over Gatorade. He was kicking over everything, throwing hats on the ground, threatening scholarships. And because of that, this team is close to tying up this game, but Tyrell Brown goes down. Third and goal. 0 for 5 on third and goal. Ro Derek Johnson's in the game. The offensive line get a block. We finally get in the end zone. I hate that it's not Tyro Brown, but I don't care at this point. We need to win this game for our season to still be alive. Mac taking his time. The blitz is there. They say he fumbled. Another fumble by a quarterback in Cascade Valley is going to cost us, and Nebraska is going to have the lead. It's been a tough game for Cascade Valley quarterbacks. It doesn't really matter who's in there right now. The pressure. We've got defensive linemen catching up to quarterbacks that have 90 speed. This has been a ridiculous afternoon. Our guys trying to get it going here. Tyro Brown, a nice little run. He's going to get the first down for this team. Nebraska's ability to get to the quarterback has just been a thing of frustration. We have not really had an answer for that, but we have found that our running backs are starting to get open a whole lot against this defense. Third quarter is winding down. Thornhill is going to find a guy. Return to the Mac. Return to the Mac with a beautiful juke. Only needed one guy to get away from him, and he was only able to get down to about the 20. Inside the red zone, this is an important drive. We have to not turn this ball over. We have to tie this game up. And Tyro Brown trying to stretch to the edge. Tyro Brown is going to be stopped at the three. That's going to be a great way to end the third quarter. 
right in the doorstep of tying this game up again. Which Mervin McMurvin has coached these guys up. They know what it takes. Big time players make big time plays. We need that to happen right here. Back door, he's gonna keep this man. He's in the end zone, and that is going to tie this game up. 21. 21. Nebraska's offense has not been good at all. I think they're under 100 yards total offense today. It has just been their defense forcing turnovers. That has really got them where they are right now. And look at Tyro Brown. We're here for four yards. Second down, six yards to go. Return to the Mac. A nice little play here. He's going to pick up 12 yards. He's been so clutch these past few weeks. Heavy set here. Nebraska's creeping. Or Derek Johnson, though, solid run until he gets absolutely destroyed. Keaton Skira for Nebraska has just been unbelievable. Chris Mack actually has back spasms, which is not good right now. Gonna be missing him in the pass game, but we got Tyro Brown in the return game with a decent run, but it's gonna be third and one. What I'm scared about is our third down conversions have not been good today. Uh, we are in the red zone where we could potentially kick a field goal here, but I'm just hoping we get a first down and we keep this drive moving for a touchdown. Tyro, or excuse me, Roderick Johnson runs over a linebacker. It's about time we see some physicality out there. Thornhill and Brown in the backfield again. Thornhill zooming around. He fumbled earlier today, but we are trusting Mac Thornhill with how good he's been overall. Nebraska with a small defensive line, but they have pinched it a little bit. Heavy linebacker set. Tyro Brown forcing his way forward, but it's only going to be maybe a yard. Third and goal. Two for seven on third down conversions. One of those being on this drive. Roderick Johnson in the game. No sign of Tyro Brown, but Roderick Johnson is going in the end zone for the first time today. Cascade Valley has the lead. Thornhill and Roderick Johnson in the game. Bringing the clock down as low as we possibly can here. Thornhill gets lit up, but he does get to the middle of the field, which is kind of what we want right here. Play clock winding down. It's a second below the actual game clock. We're going to try to put this one away and show the committee that we have a double digit lead against the number one team in the nation because that's how the Cascade Valley Coyotes roll. And USC takes the lead back against Georgia Southern, which we kind of expected here, but this is a big win for our team. Taylor Reed had the worst game of his young career. Mac Thornhill had the best game of his young career. And Desmond Simmons. Three tackles, two interceptions. So many guys deserve player of the game today, in my opinion. But I got to give it to maybe, I don't know, somebody on defense. But I want to give a shout out to Mac Thornhill, too. Without him, we do not win this game. Woo! Recapping the stats, Mac Thornhill, 7-9, 102 yards, efficient. Got sacked once, but the retro freshman looked very good in today's game. Taylor Reed, 8-15, 89 yards, two interceptions, two fumbles. Part of the issue was... Offensive line didn't block for The other part of the issue was he just couldn't hold on to the rock. And that's a big problem when you're playing the number one team in the nation, especially at home. On the ground, Tyro Brown, back-to-back -back weeks with 100 yards rushing, does not get in the end zone, but still, this is what we need. I don't care about the highs and we care about winning games. And right now, that's what we're doing. Big shout out though to Mac Thornhill using his legs, getting in the end zone once today, and Ro Derrick Johnson fighting for tough yards, two touchdowns from him. And can we shout out Jay Bone? Taking it to the house on a nice little wide receiver running back option there. It looked great and it felt even better. In the air, Chris Mack was fantastic. Four for 97. Major yards for him. He ultimately got hurt a little bit in the game with the back spasm, but when we needed him, he was there. Outside of him, it's really Jay Bone with four for 41, and we could not get the passing game going. It was all about the running game today. Defensively, Keyshawn Anderson played the best game of his young career. The six foot 209 athlete who was an outside linebacker for us, seven tackles, three of them for a loss, two sacks today. He was massive, falls if needed. Uh, from a sash perspective, Anderson again with one, or maybe two. Wilkins, Gamblin, and Pollard all had one today. And then interceptions, the duo themselves. Desmond Simmons and Rodriguez Gibson. Gibson is now, I believe, two away um, from tying the all-time record that Mike Hemphill set for most interceptions in a career at Cascade Valley. And Simmons is now, I believe, four away. He's not too far from Rodriguez Gibson. These two dudes have been the most dynamic combo we've had since Jordan Damon and Mike Hemphill. Games like this really test your team. It was the number one team in the nation coming into our house after losing a winning streak that was 30 plus games over a couple of seasons in the previous years. It was tough to see how the offense played, but when your defense plays like this, knowing your offense really just had an off day more than anything else, I like our chances a lot. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one.